Hello traders, welcome to another video about gold. Today is Sunday, September 17th. It's 3.40 EST. From past week on Wednesday, we had the inflation da data. The core uh, month over month jumped to 0.3% and the inflation rate month over month to 0.6% and the inflation rate year over year 3.7% and the core inflation year over year jumped 4.3%. On Thursday, September the 14th, the ECB hiked interest rate for the 10th consecutive time and signaled that it's likely done tightening policy as inflation has started to decline but it's still expected to remain too high for too long and the central bank has also significantly reduced its GDP growth projections now anticipating the economy to expand by 0.7% in 2023, 1% in 2024, and 1.5% 1 in 2025. Moving on to the US, we got the producer price index, which increased by 0.7% in August 2023, and this is the highest level since June 2022. And it also exceeded market expectations of a 0.5% rise. The retail sales in the US advanced 0.6% month over month in August 2023, higher than a downwardly revised 0.5% rise in July and beating forecast of 0.2%. The data continues to point to robust consumer spending despite high prices and borrowing costs. So far the data is inflation and this is not good for gold. It, the initial jobless claims arose by 3,000 to 220,000 on the week ending September 9th, below market expectations of Two to 5,000 and holding close to near 7 months low from the previous week. This is showing a strength in the labor market, continuing strength in the labor market. Core PPI rose to 2.4% from year earlier in August, the same as in the previous months and in line with market expectations. The producer price inflation in the United States accelerated to 1.6% year over year in August 2023, the highest since April and one above the market consensus of 1.2%. And then we had the ECB press conference. President Chair Lagarde said that in coming months, inflation will fall. Risk to economic growth are titled to the downside. Domestic price pressures remain strong. And finally, on Friday, the Michigan's consumer sentiment for the US fell to 67.7 in September of 2023 from 69.5 in the previous months, retreating further from the near two-year high of 71.6 in July and missing market estimates of 69.1. Moving on to the fundamental analysis regarding the 20th of September, the likelihood of no change in interest rates has risen to 98% compared to 92% the previous week and 94% the week before. Meanwhile, the probability of rate hike in November now stands at 27.1%. And again, it's worth noting that Chairman Powell hinted at the possibility of the Fed keeping rates steady during the next meeting in September. 
you can get the probability update from the cmegroup.com website and search for FedWatch tools. Looking at the USD, the USD has been moving within an upward trend channel since its low point of 99.6 on July 16th, eventually reaching a peak of 105.16 on September 7th and the bull managed to break up this level reaching a high of 105.43 this week but again the week was concluded by an appearance of another hammer pattern and although the candlestick body is red indicating some selling pressure the overall sentiment remains bullish however it's worth noting that the bearish sentiment persists suggesting that the market bears have not yet given up analyzing technical aspects it's evident that the usd remains in an overbought condition when observing the daily charts indicating a potential correction might be on the horizon the relative strength index stochastic oscillator stochastic momentum index and true strength index are all indicating a significantly overbought conditions on the daily chart however <clears throat> it's worth noting that the smi oscillator smio is showing upside momentum Continuing our analysis of the USD and focusing on the moving averages, the USD has maintained a comfortable position above its three widely used moving averages, the 20-day, 50-day and 100-day, since it crossed above them on August 9th. The initial support level provided by the 20-day moving average currently stands at 104.27. Additionally, when examining the MACD indicator, it's evident that it remains significantly above the zero line and histogram showing upside momentum. Here's the MACD. In summary, the USD analysis reveals several key points. Multiple indicators are indicating that the USD is in highly overbought condition. <clears throat> the presence of a hammer pattern suggests that bullish sentiment remains strong. Furthermore, the USD has been demonstrating robust price action well above its moving averages and momentum appears to be holding firm. These factors collectively suggest that USD may have further upward potential, but it's important to note that a retracement near the 104 mark could be on the horizon. And it's worth mentioning that the upcoming FOMC rate decision next Wednesday has the potential to significantly impact the situation and could lead to a reversal of the current trends or add more strength to the USD and potentially test the multi-months multi high at 105.5. Turning our attention to gold, in last week's report I highlighted the formation of shooting star pattern that occurred with the Friday. September 8th close, closing price as expected, <coughs> gold experienced down pressure throughout most of the entire week and struggled to surpass its 50-day moving average situated around 1932. But on Thursday, gold recovered from a low of 19.01 and closed the day at 1910.75 and the upside move continued on Friday by testing again its 50-day moving average and closed the week at 1923.88. From a technical analysis, undoubtedly the recent strength of the USD presents a significant hurdle for gold's upward trajectory. And taking a closer look at the weekly chart reveals that gold has faced ongoing difficulties in crossing above its 20-week moving average since it was breached on June 19th. Now it's at 1946. While gold closed in the negative territory last week, this week presented a different narrative. The emergence of green hammer pattern formation suggests that bulls gained the upper hand by the week's end, indicating potential for further upside in the coming weeks. 
is a glimmer of hope for the bulls as indicated by the weekly MACD while there is evidence of declining bearish momentum in the histogram. It's also noteworthy that both the MACD line and the signal line, which is the 9 week exponential moving average, continue to maintain positions above the zero line suggesting that there may still be some bullish potential in the market in the weeks ahead. Taking a closer look at the daily chart, gold has been trapped within the range bound by its 100 day moving average and its 20 day moving average since August 28th, <clears throat> eagerly awaiting a catalyst to determine its short term trajectory. The persistent inability to surpass its resistance posed by the 50 day moving average indicates significant selling pressure within this range. It tried to breach it maybe four times, but it fails at 1929, 1930, 1931. Moreover, it decisively broke below its 20 day moving average, but after dropping to as low as 1901 on Thursday, it managed to close the week above both the 20 days moving average and the 200 days moving average, signaling the potential of further upside. The daily MACD clearly signal that the bears are losing momentum, evident in the declining histogram which represent the difference between the 12 and the 26 simple moving averages, uh, sorry, exponential moving average, not simple, the 12 and the 26 exponential moving average, when coupled with the overbought conditions currently facing the USD, this gives a bit stronger signal of a possibility of a potential rise in gold and breaking above the 1932 will potentially lead to testing its 100 day moving average currently at 1947. Looking at supports and resistances, this is the Bollinger Band chart. The upper band is at 47 and the lower band at 18.94. The first resistance at 1930.47, the September 15th high, 1931.7, the 50 days moving average, 1939, September 5th high, 1946, the 20 weeks moving average, 1947, the 100 days moving average, and 1947.23, the upper band of Bollinger Band, and in, in my opinion, this is this would be a very decisive point, 1947, 1946. And if we broke above 1947 decisively, I believe we should retest the highs at the 1982 and 1987, which was on July 20th. And there is a big chance that it could retreat from the 1946 or 1947. On the support side, the 200 day moving average comes at 1922, the 20 days moving average 1921, the 1900 the psychological level, and then the Bollinger bands, lower band 1894.65 and August 21 low 1884.9. Finally, the economic calendar. Of course, all eyes will be looking at the FOMC rate decision on Wednesday 20th of September. It's widely expected that the Fed will maintain the current rate and I expect a slightly hawkish tone implying that all options are on the table in the upcoming meetings. This is scheduled on Wednesday at 2 p.m. followed by the Fed Press Conference at 2.30. That's it for now. Good luck everyone and have a wonderful week.